Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build this M3 Stuart light tank by Warlord and Italeri. This is a 156 or 28mm scale plastic model. As you can see from the pictures on the back of the box, this kit can be used to make a variety of variants of this tank. I've chosen to build the British M3A1, which is not pictured. There's also an image of the included vehicle cards, decal sheets and damage markers. Inside the box you'll find all of those things, unsurprisingly. There's also this instruction sheet which has much less glare in real life. These instructions are laid out reasonably well and are mostly easy enough to understand and follow, though there are some confusing parts and some part numbers seem to have been omitted. I was able to understand the intention anyway though. There are different instructions for the different variations of this model so you'll need to pay attention. There are of course these vehicle cards with some information you'll find useful while playing bolt action. There's also these damage markers. Interestingly these include plastic 25mm bases rather than the MDF ones I've seen in all the other kits that include these. I might use these instead as spare bases just in case I need them. Decals are also included. These look decent and there is a variety of markings included but I feel as though there are fewer markings than Warlord's other decal sheets have. Maybe that's because there are a few really big ones taking up a lot of space. Not really a complaint, more an observation. The two sprues in this kit come encased in protective plastic as usual. It doesn't look like there's a huge number of parts on these sprues, but there's enough stuff here to build a variety of M3 Stuarts. Unfortunately there's only one main gun so you can't build both turret versions for additional flexibility. I don't think it's especially surprising that these parts are all fairly well detailed and neatly moulded. There's a lot of bolt and rivet detail on this model and it stands out quite nicely. There were no moulding errors or other issues that I could see, other than the usual mould lines which aren't particularly bad. They will still take some time to remove though. There are three crew figures, all commanders, to represent the different nations that used this tank. I think that's the Russian one with his arms folded looking all disapproving. He might be upset that we're not building this, so let's get to it. The first step is to build the track assemblies using this pile of parts. There are six pieces of tread, which I was immediately worried about. The more parts, the more chances for gaps and fitting difficulties. Here's where the first confusion with the instructions appeared. The top run of the tracks are numbered the same for both sides of the tank. The missing teeth seem to be on different sides of the part though. I didn't notice this until after I'd started building the second track set. The teeth are missing to clear the return roller parts, so obviously they should face the inside of the tank. This is definitely something you want to be careful with and test fit. First I attach the drive sprocket. This part is keyed though the mounting post on this part was a bit messed up, so I was careful to align the teeth on both sides. Then come the tracks. I glue the top section on first. The missing teeth do help with the positioning and it's not exactly difficult to put into place. As you can see the tracks lock in with the teeth of the drive sprocket which I thought was kind of cool. I then installed the two rear sections of track. I suggest being careful with these. With four end parts all of different sizes it's easy to get them confused. It might actually be worth leaving each part on the sprue until you need it. The fit on this end isn't too bad. There's still some gaps in the treads but it's not too bad. I would prefer there to be fewer parts though. Next comes the lower segment. This went on easy enough. It's a nice flat piece with no curves to worry about after all. Next the two front sections. At first this went on easily enough but then I added the second part and it didn't quite fit right. I fiddled around with it but I don't think I succeeded in making it look very good. It looks really messy and I was quite annoyed by this and almost didn't continue building the model. I think the mistake I made was putting the front sections on last. The second track set turned out much better and I attached the front track parts first on that one. Fortunately a lot of the drive sprocket will be hidden by the side skirts on the British version of the Stuart. Next the track assemblies can be glued to the lower hull. This is nice and easy. Positioning is guided by the bars and slots. The protrusions on the top of the part also help to make sure the tracks don't sit too high. Next I glue this tiny little mounting ring onto the 30 cal machine gun that goes into the hull. This is simple enough as long as you don't drop the tiny part on the floor. I test fit this just to see how it will fit onto the hull. Then I assemble these two air filters, or that's what I think they are. These are keyed though there's still enough play in the parts that a little nudging will be needed to make them line up properly. Do be sure to glue the correct parts together here. Both filters are comprised of different parts. It's easy enough. I put those aside for later and then I glue on the hull rear. This could easily be placed either way up but I believe I've put it on the right way. The instructions weren't explicit in this. 
I then installed the Hull MG. This goes into place easily enough, though I needed to nudge it just into place with my knife because of my fat fingers. I could certainly have done this at the time I was test fitting the gun. The instructions seemed to suggest that this was something that needed to be done before gluing the upper hull to the lower hull, but I just can't see a reason for that. Oh well, what matters is that it's on. I glue the hull down next anyway. This is pretty easy. There are guide pins at either end of the hull to help position this and it goes together quite easily. Do pay attention to the instructions. If you're building the US Tunisia version, you'll need to drill some holes in the hull before doing this. As usual, I apply pressure to try and minimize gaps, but there's still a tiny one at the front here. I really doubt this will be visible at all during regular use of this model, but you can see right through the gap here. Probably not a huge deal. Even primer might fill that. I then assemble this plate. This is a port for a machine gun that has been covered over, which explains why this isn't a single piece even though it's simple enough to be one. It goes on the left side of the hull. On the right side I glue a plain piece of armour here and then I try to install this triangle part here, but it doesn't fit very well at all. I found this to be kind of frustrating. The large rectangular panel has keying on the back so you can't move it further out away from the hull to allow the triangle part to fit, so I had to hack at it until there was space for both parts to fit. I didn't get a lot of that on camera. Eventually most of it fits into place, though it does look a little bit messy. The instructions are not especially helpful here. The other side had the same issues with the fit. It took a fair amount of trimming and slicing that I don't think I should have had to do, but I do eventually get these parts to go together. I might have just been doing it wrong, I often do, but to me it seems like they just designed this and never did a test build. They really could have done this better. Next, these side panels go on. These go on very easily, especially considering the previous parts. There is keying on the back to ensure a proper fit. There's one of these for either side of the tank. Unfortunately, the gaps are pretty bad on both sides. These will definitely need to be filled before the tank is painted. Then I glue on the frontal plate here. Be sure to choose the appropriate one for your model. This goes on quite easily. There's still a bit of a gap, but not as bad as the others. Because I'm building a British Stuart, I need to add these side skirts. These are mostly easy enough to install, just the front part is a little bit janky. The rounded edges make it so this is pretty hard to line the parts up properly. The one on the right side went on a little nicer than the one on the left, but it's still a bit bad looking. Definitely going to need to apply some putty here I think. Next come the two air filters. They go on either side of the hull here. They're easy to attach and it's pretty easy to figure out which one of these assemblies goes on which side. I then attach this upper hull rear plate. While removing this part from the sprue, I accidentally pulled off one of the tail lights. I did glue it back on, but definitely be careful when you remove it from the sprue so you don't have to glue yours back on too. After that, I install this antenna. This is part number 69. Ha ha ha, that's the funny sex number! Wa -la 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 -la. The installation of the antenna is easy. It's keyed so you can only really attach it one way. Then some stowage boxes. These are simply installed here on the rear. The instructions suggest the forward right side as an alternate position for this. I assume these are for carrying tea. British tanks probably need a lot of tea to run. I then install the headlamps. These come with protective bars as one piece. There's no guide for these parts, so you just have to glue them on and nudge them into what looks like the correct position. I think the reason for this is some variants don't have the headlamps and this allows both versions to be built without people not wanting the headlamps having to fill holes in. They're going to have plenty of gaps to fill in anyway though. And that's it for the hull. Turret time. First, I glue the coaxial machine gun into the mantlet. Easy enough. Then I glue the main gun into the turret front wall. This is also easy, though you should of course pay attention to the elevation of the gun. I add a little bit of extra glue on the back here just to make the bond a little bit stronger. I don't install the mantlet until later. Then I glue one turret half onto the turret ring part. This is easy enough. Just make sure the locking tabs face downward. It makes sense to then attach the other half. This is easy too. I apply pressure to try and minimize gaps, particularly along the rear. Then the roof. Again, not especially difficult. Just make sure the part is pressed down into the recess all the way around. 
I then glue the gun and turret front into place. I left the mantlet off this so I could apply pressure to get this to fit without damaging the mantlet, in particular the machine gun on the mantlet. It goes on easily enough. And then I forgot to show myself gluing the mantlet on, but you can see it there so you know I didn't forget it. Next it's time for hatches. There's obviously two of these and they're differently shaped so it's easy enough to know which hatch goes into which hole. Of course you could model these open if you would prefer to do that. Then I glue on this rear vision device and I assume pistol port. I'm no M3 Stewart surgeon so I don't know exactly what it is, but it does go into place easily enough. After that I install this bracket thing. This goes on easily enough though it did need a fair bit of nudging to make it sit properly. I have no idea what this is for, maybe it's a mounting point for an antenna. Next I assemble the pintle mount for the machine gun. This is simple, though the top part isn't labelled in the instructions and it had some flash that made it look like it was another thing. That part is number 70 for those that might find knowing helpful. I then glue the ammo box onto the side of the MG. It's quite easy and the result looks rather gun. I built these parts separately so the glue will be set when I try to join them together, making things a little bit easier. Next I glue the pintle mounting to the turret like so. Nothing especially tricky about this. I try to make sure it's nice and straight. Then I glue the gun on. Doing this separately makes it a lot easier to get the gun pointing exactly where you want it in relation to the turret. Also makes it a lot less fiddly. And with that, the turret and thus the entire M3 is completed. The turret locks into place with these locking tabs. This is easy enough to attach and I'm sure you could have figured that out by yourself. And there we have it. One British M3A1 Stuart. I don't have any other M3s in any scale, so I have nothing to compare this model with, but rest assured next M3 Stuart I get in this scale will be compared with this one. I do like this model, but there were some annoyances during its construction. Fortunately it has still turned out looking fairly good, and once I've filled the gaps and applied paint it should look much better. The awkward fit of the tracks on the drive sprocket, particularly the one on the left side was pretty bad. But the side skirts do kind of help hide that, though they do have their own issues with fitting at the front. I had initially figured that I might need to cover the tracks with mud to hide it, but maybe I can get away with less mud now. The gaps in the flat side panels on the hull look pretty bad too, but they won't be challenging to fill. Once the model is primed you will probably never know those gaps existed. Those negatives aside, the construction of this model was mostly very easy. The instructions were a little confusing in places, but not so much that you couldn't get the model built. The detail on this model is pretty nice. It's crisp and neat. In my opinion it's a pretty good representation of an M3 Stuart. I like that there are a lot of choices of which version of the Stuart you could build with this kit. Though I do wish there was a second gun, so the hexagonal turret could be built too. Not a big issue at all, I just like having extra turrets for different uses. All that said I'm perfectly happy to play this British M3A1 as a proxy for any other type of M3 Stuart. It's not that big a stretch of the imagination to do that. I think this is a good little tank. What do you think? If you've built this model did you experience the same difficulties as I did? Let me know in the comments below. Or if you have any other questions or comments they can go in the comments section too. It's where they belong after all. And of course don't forget to do things like subscribing here on YouTube and following me on social media. And if you really like what I do you can always help support the channel over at patreon.com slash herbederperderp. That would be excellent. Check the links in the description for further information. I shall return soon, so until then, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.